This podcast contains adult language, descriptions of violence, sexual references, and other possibly offensive themes. Listener discretion is advised. Previously on Back to the Story. Why are you attacking people traveling, just protecting your territory? You come into our land, you trespass upon our shores. There are many more of us. It doesn't seem like we're going to have quite so easy a time. We should probably just keep an eye out for more of them. Why did they only speak with you? It's an old language. What do you mean by old language? I, I understood them perfectly. That's all my mouth like that. Good, okay. <laughs> So, coming back into the story, um, you guys are moving forward, seeing a bridge ahead. Ellery went to scout, and though you can all see pretty well, it is twilight. The light is dimming, though not quite completely not gone. Um, you can see this bridge crossing this not incredibly wide, maybe 15, 20 feet gap. Upon the map, you can see the green is sort of more solid ground. The tan color is grassy marsh area. And it's about five feet down or so from the green. So it's a little bit of a slope. And as you guys are moving forward and Ellery's peering out beyond, searching for something, Ball noticed some bubbles grabbing Vesper, pulling her, pointing as Ball and Vesper and then the rest of you see a entity, humanoid, leap out of the water. You see they have some sort of strange headdress uh, with antlers as they're reaching up, grabs the top of the bridge leaps up, pulling himself up, grabbing onto the back of Ellery, um, the back of her clothing, and begin to pull down. Ellery, make a acrobatics or acrobatics check as this person is trying to grab with you. Twelve? So, gearing out, you feel something suddenly pull you from behind. As the rest of you see this person wrap his hands around the back of her armor and cloth and pull back. As Ellery, you fall backwards, heads over heel. <laughs> into the water as the water splashes all around. And that is what you guys see. And we will jump into initiative. So that will bring us up to this person first. So someone pops out of the grass, their head just barely sticking up as they fire up, trying to fire at Ezekiel. A 22 to hit. Yeah, that'll hit. You roll high. Five piercing damage as Ezekiel, an arrow comes from the side and slams into you just under your shoulder, piercing in. Luckily, the leather armor blocked most of it, uh, but still manages to pierce through. Um, as it hits, make a constitution saving throw. You feel 21. a sting. You feel a sting burning more than it should, as if someone's pouring peroxide or alcohol directly on the wound. You grit your teeth and push it out, quickly removing the arrow before whatever is tipped upon it uh, sinks into your bloodstream. So this person just shot at Ezekiel before ducking down into the grass. Another one over here gets up um, out of the grass, releasing an arrow towards Ball. Uh, you have some cover just from the angle, about half cover or so. And actually, you're not hit. they don't get the hidden bonus from you. Or you're not surprised. But that is a 20 to hit. So your AC has uh, plus 2. Add it to whatever your normal AC is. Um, so that would just hit. I'm going to use my reaction to uh, cast shield. Okay. So, the um, so I guess like maybe the way I see it is like, or I get Vesper's attention and get and like point her in that direction. And I assume kind of like at the same time is when all this stuff's happening. So maybe as I'm pointing, I see an arrow come from that direction. So I'm kind of ready for it and just kind of uh, reflexively uh, cast shield to block the arrow. Okay. And are you consciously doing that? Um, or is it more of like you want to block it and something else helps you do that? Yeah, I think that's what it is. It's more of okay. like I'm ready to block it and then just the shield is what manifests through. Okay. Yeah. So you're pointing out, you see the air and you kind of put your arm up to try to block it with your armor, but it never hits. And there's a flash of light that knocks it to the side, clattering upon the ground. That will bring us up to Calvin as that person now ducks below the grasses as well. How high up is the bridge? And is the is there like a steep distance it's, or 
Yeah, so so the bridge is about level with the green area. The golden area is a little lower, a couple feet, um, and it's tall kind of marsh grasses that you've seen all through this area. And so these people, it seems like if they crouch, they don't have to go fully prone, but if they crouch, they're able to get below the line of the grasses. So you can kind of see the grasses moving when they pop up and even when they go back down, um, even though you don't have a perfect line of sight on them. And it's not incredibly steep. It maybe goes down three, maybe four feet at the steepest. Okay, next question. Ellery, is she still on the bridge? Is she falling off the bridge currently? What is she her is, She bitch? has been... This person gr- jumped out of the water, grabbed the bridge, pulled up, grabbed her, and pulled her down. She's currently under the water. So you don't oh, see her anymore. Cool. Well, this shouldn't surprise anybody. Calvin will make a mad dash in that direction. How far can I get? So running straight in that direction, if you go into oh, the I bridge... Probably- yeah, you won't have to deal idea. with the difficult terrain. So 5, 10, 15, 20, I don't know if Calvin would know that. But. So it's, it's up to you. So you no, can get to fun. there and then jump off. So that's 30 feet just rushing forward right there. So that's your movement. You can dash or and whatever I can't you want to do from there. can see the person that grabbed her? They're currently both underwater. You can see the water where they fell in. I'll ping that for you. It's about 10 feet in front of you, just off the bridge, is where they fell, but you can't currently see them. Is it murky the, or is it? It's it's too murky for you to see. There's a lot of soot, so any waves or movement kicks up so much soot it's hard to see. Yeah, then I'm gonna try to get to where she was. Maybe I basically want to land somewhere like right there. Sure. Like right yeah, you can you can dash and just jump yeah. in. Okay. So you dash and just dive in. And as you do, sort of plunges beneath the water. Uh, trying to blink open and see it is incredibly murky. You feel something as you jump in and you hit something. You're not sure who or what um, as you use your action. You have your bonus action remaining if you have anything to do with that. Uh, I don't want to use it just yet. Okay. Okay, so Kurt Calvin, you're currently underwater. You hit something, but you can't quite tell what. Um, how, how deep is it seeming to be? Hard to tell. It doesn't look incredible. Over my head? Deep. It's over like, your head, yeah. Okay. But you haven't hit the bottom yet. Um, so that will bring us up to this person here. Let me ping their location. So another person pops out of the grass at this corner here. They're going to go for kind of hard to hit. So they're going to try to hit ball. Though from that angle probably has three quarters cover. And I have uh, 20. Okay, so I have got 23 to see normally plus whatever okay. the cover is. The, the arrow flies towards you and it actually goes just over your head. Just sailing over. That will bring us up to... This person, Ellery. So you're currently being pulled underwater. And Ellery, you feel being pulled deeper. And then you feel a sudden... That's a natural 20. Dealing... You feel 11 piercing damage as something jabs into your side. You then take... You feel a bubbling pain... As you take 11 fire, because you're engulfed in water, I'm going to give you resistance, so you get 5 fire damage. As this piercing something digs into your side, burning into it. And that will bring us up to... Amson is surprised, Ezekiel was surprised, and that will bring us up to... I rolled a 22 perception. Okay, yes, then you you would see it, yeah. Okay, I was like, technically I rolled better than balls, so... I forgot all this. Uh, (laughs) Let me actually see, get back in this. Okay, everyone else rolled low. So yeah, you would actually, you're not surprised. Okay, then I am going to use my action. I'm going to put a flaming sphere right where I saw that person dive in, the one that shot me. Okay, so a ball of flames erupts. And I can't see anything, but hopefully that'll deal with some of those marsh. Immediately setting the grass on fire on the marsh. Four, five, six, and I'm going to get there. I will go ram it a square to the east. So to the right? Yeah, to the right. Okay, so the square kind of bumps to that side, setting a light, uh, more flames. You don't hear a wail of pain, but more marshlands begin to set on fire. Ending your turn, that will bring us over to this person, which I think I am to start to move these guys, even though you can't exactly see them. So this person is going to pop up, barely able to see much of Ezekiel. There's an angle on there. He's going to try to shoot anyway. 
No. The arrow flies up and actually is aimed too low, hitting into the bridge at the corner, kind of flops over, breaking. And that'll bring us over to this guy. So another of these. And you can see as they're popping up, as you're now closer, you can see them popping up with that tanned golden skin. This one's actually going to climb out of the marsh to have a better shot and is going to fire upon you, Ezekiel. It's a 12. No. The arrow flies over. And then they're going to move back into the grass. So you can kind of see the grass parting. You can tell roughly where they are, but you don't have a good line of sight on them. And that brings up to Ellery. Um, Ellery, what's your constitution modifier? Two. Okay. All right, so you're currently underwater, being dragged below something burning in the side of your ribcage. So, first question, if I'm underwater, how does that affect my ability to use spells with a verbal component? I know the way Mercer plays it is you have one breath, essentially, so she could get one off, um, but it would reduce... Reduce, I believe, the amount of time she can be under. I like I like that a lot. So you can, we'll say with each breath, we'll call it five rounds worth of air required to do that. So you can you can let out some of the air that you're holding your breath. Right now you have about 30 rounds. You can hold your breath a pretty good amount, amount of time, about three minutes. So Okay. First thing I'm going to do is use two sorcery points to cast Shock and Grasp as a bonus action on whoever grabbed me. Okay. Is that a tech roll? Yes. Okay. Go for it. That is 19. That will hit. And that will be 10 points of lightning damage, and it can't take a reaction. Okay. So you release lightning into that direction. You have to let out some of the air to do so, but you are able to. And then I am going to try to get away. Um, so you're currently grappled. You can use your action to try to break out, and you use a bonus action with sorcery yes. points to cast that. Okay. So you can use your action to try to break it out. You have to make a acrobatics check okay. or athletics to try to break it out. Okay. That's really good. That's 24. Yeah. So you twist, turn, breaking out, and you're in murky water. You can tell up is up, but other than that, you're not sure where you are. I am going to attempt to swim to shore. Though I guess I can't tell which direction I can go. So you're about 10 feet or so down where you currently are. So you can go 10 feet up, use 10 feet of your movement, which would actually cost 20 because you're swimming, to get to the surface. I will do that. Okay. So you just swim straight up. You can hear the sh- sh- below you as you swim away, getting to the surface, <gasps> breathing in once more. So then I'm going to move, swim five feet towards the shore from the direction. We came from. Okay, so swimming back. That will bring us up to Vesper. Uh, because Ball got your attention, you're currently not surprised. I'm going to run up, I think. I'm gonna go f- yeah, let's just put these guys in my range. The red one, the closer one, I'm going to uh, Sacred Flame. So I need to make a dexterity safe. Do you have to be able to see them? Yes. Can I not see them? You know where they are, but they're. Line of sight is broken because they're beneath the grasses. Okay. Then I will spend this turn to uh, dashing and I'll just get farther. Sure. Okay. So okay. sprinting forth, looking around, trying to get a target, you know, about where they are, but not enough. Clutch your hands and then sprinting forth again. That will bring us up to this one over here. This one's going to pop up and it has a pretty clear shot on Ezekiel and Vesper. Um, and is going to go for Ezekiel, who's a slightly easier shot. 13. Zero. Flies over. And that will bring us up the ball. At this point, I can see Ellery kind of getting out of the water. Yeah, you can see Ellery is kind of splashed to the water. And you can okay. probably hear me swearing at this point. <laughs> All right, so since um, the Ellery crisis seems to have been averted, I'm just going to run at the, the closest one I see, or the one... Though I don't see them where I know their general location is. Yeah, you can see the grass moving, so you can head in that general direction. Okay, so I'll run to this one, the one to the right here. And I'm hoping that once I'm kind of on top of him, I can actually see him. Yeah, and how much movement do you have left after that? I have to be one square lower because I have 25, not 30. So I'd be here, and that's all I have in terms of movement. Okay, 
So you, you can see the grass moving, though you can't see them. So it'd be a disadvantage to attack, but you could certainly swing in that direction with your big weapon. Okay. I will do it, and I will use uh, Bleeding Blade for my attack and disadvantage. A 10, I don't think will hit. So you swing open, you can see some of the grasses are cut, um, falling loosely. You don't see any blood come forth. And then I will use uh, one sorcery point. Uh, actually, maybe two, two sorcery points to make a bonus action attack and try to do the same thing with disadvantage. Okay. And that's natural one. Okay. Roll another just straight d20. Uh, that's okay. a nine. So you have a rough idea of where they are. This time, instead of a sweeping blow, you come down over your head as you slice into the muck, as you pull, and it's stuck for the moment. As you pull loose, you begin to pry it loose. Uh, for the moment, your sword is in the muck. All right. And that'll be the end of my turn. Okay. At this moment, this other one, and Ezekiel, is it when they start their turn within five feet or end? End. So this one is going to go sprinting out of the flaming flaming marsh grass, coming up to where everyone can see them pretty well at this point. Uh, drawing their arrow is going to fire upon Ball. Ball, you barely hear a t- as something hits you in the back of your armor, falling off without a problem. Another one is going to pop up. This one's going to pop up. Get up there. Fire at Vesper this time. 15 for Vesper? Just hits. Just hits, okay. I didn't pull out my shield yet, so. So that is 5 piercing damage. Alright, I'm going to just make a wisdom save. That's fun. That's not going to do it. That's a 12. Okay. You feel the pain as the air hits you, and then you feel a second pain. As you look down and you see one of the snakes that makes up the handle is now bitten into your hand, and you feel intense rage at this individual elf. Cool. Who kind of moves over to the side. It's going to get bowed right there. And that's going to bring us up to those purple Calvin. So you're underwater. You can hear uh, sl- thrashing around and the crackle of electricity briefly lighting up the murky waters. Calvin will try to reach out and grab the closest individual straight Athletic. hand. Athletics check. Because he is unaware that Ellery is out of the water. Am I correct on this? Yeah, it's hard to see. Cool. So, yeah, I'm playing it as I would. I rolled horribly 13. Okay. So you reach out, and at this point, you can see the silhouette of an entity in this murky water turn. And the only reason you can really see them is because there's a dull reddish light that's kind of emanating from their chest. You can see there's a uh, section, and you can see it pulses. In red light, you see this black silhouette of this person. You reach out to grab them, and they take some sort of weapon in their side and just slide your arm to the side. They're much more adept at fighting in the water. Okay, that's cool. Well, then, I seeing that is clearly not Ellery, I will uh, swim away. Yes. Are you going to swim straight up to the surface, or I guess I can. Um, so it's just, yeah, uh, just you can go whichever up. way you you want to go. You're about ten feet down. And just movement is half speed. Your swim speed is half your normal speed. Yeah, I'll basically pull an Ellery. What Ellery did, swim to the top, uh, get my bearings, and then move another five feet afterwards. Okay. And this person doesn't have a reaction until the start of their turn, I believe, because of the electricity? Right. Okay. All right. So, yeah, you swim away. The electricity still pulsing, keeping them, preventing them from moving. So you get to the surface, you have a little bit of movement left. If you wanted to do anything with it. I'm good. I think I, that's far. I moved over once, so I'm there. Okay. All right. So you get to the service swimming towards, and that will bring us up to this orange one. Where's this guy? Oh, there he is. So this one, tired of getting bad angles, is going to also get up level to where they can see again. And this one's going to fire upon Ezekiel. Another arrow whoosh, flies wide. These guys are bad. Finally, the person in the water is going to swim up, catching to the surface right between Galvin and Ellery. And they are going to strike out with this strange something between a machete and a short spear. He's going to strike out at Ellery and then at Galvin. I'm so going to impose disadvantage. So, okay. geez, my favorite. so that is an 18 or a 19. So 18 
Um, uh, plus something. Never mind. Okay. I just look at the numbers. It's a it's a high number. It's whatever. It's twenty six. Dealing uh, two piercing damage and six fire reduced to three because you're currently in the water. So I just swear a little bit this time. Okay. And then the second strike is going to go towards you, Calvin, as you try to interpose your shield, um, but sluggishly pushing through the water, you're going to turn towards you. Uh, that is a two. So they turn quickly trying to hit you and just run into heavy armor and is unable to penetrate. At that, he's going to go back underwater. <laughs> beneath the water once again. And that will bring us up to Amson. All right, so I'm going to run up 25 feet ahead, right to the edge of the bridge here, uh, ignoring the creature to my left. And I am going to cast Hold Person at third level, so then both of them have to make wisdom saving throws. Okay. So the first one, the purple, that is a six. Nope. And the orange one is a natural 20. Okay. So the six one freezes in place as you see them reaching towards their side, towards a net. Um, the other one is still able to move. So yeah, one of them is paralyzed, the other one is not. And I am going to use my bonus action to inspire... Because why not? Vesper. So I'm going to sing. So she dances in and out of the fight at a glance. This finesse is dodging hits she does so gracefully. And that's my turn. Okay, and that will bring us up to Ezekiel. Oh. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is bonus action and bring that flaming sphere into right in front of blue over here. Yeah, right there. So it's got to make a dexterity saving throw. That is a 13. That will fail. So eh, terrible. Four fire damage. Okay. So running from it, this ball chases them out. That whole corner is now on fire. And it jams into the back of his leg. He tries to dodge it, and he mostly does, but burns out the back of their calf pretty bad. Okay. So next, I'm going to run off the bridge. I'm on ruler. And just hop into the water uh, and use my action to turn into a dolphin again. Which I don't have a sheet for, but I have the stats, okay. so I'll, I'll just roll. Is that a large or medium creature? That is a medium creature. Medium creature. Okay. It also has blind sight out to 60 feet. Okay. Thank you, echolocation. Yeah, so your sonar, you can tell where um, echolocation, you can tell Calvin and Vesper are on the uh, shore there, or on the surface. And there is someone, and I'll move him. This person is about 10 feet down underwater and is currently there under the bridge. Okay. Um, and do you, when you jump, do you turn mid-air, or do you turn once Oh, yeah, full, like, swan dive into mermaid form, <laughs> like, as I go down. Okay. Some results splashing in. Um, as a and then I'm just going to hold there for now, because I don't have any actions left. Okay. So I'll bring us up to this one, who's going to pop out of the grass. He's going to fire down or that Calvin, the closest person to him. That one is a... 21 to hit, actually, versus Calvin. Yeah, yeah, that, okay. that hits. Uh, five piercing damage, as the arrow finds some minor chink in your armor, able to pierce through. Are we still um, hit with aid? I know it doesn't like, last like eight hours or some shit. It does, so you have five okay. extra hit points. Cool beans, thank you. Um, and then that person is going to duck back down into the grass. And that'll bring us up to this green one here. He's actually going to move up to where they can see a little better. And is going to fire upon ball, actually. Uh, 19 to hit against the ball. No, uh, that'll hit. Uh, runs into you. Uh, seven piercing damage as the arrow chinks into you from the other side. And that will bring us up to Ellery. He's currently at the surface of the water bobbing. You see Calvin coming up. Uh, swimming right next to you. Okay, so I am going... Can I see the ones that popped up and popped back down, or...? 
Briefly. Briefly. Yes. So it pops back up and then pops back down. So the ones in the tan, you know their vicinity and AOE could hit them, but you don't have line of sight. You okay. could attack at disadvantage if you want to try to hit them. Because they're, they're not hiding. You know where they are. It's just their line of sight is broken. Right. That last turn changed my plan a little bit. So I am going to try and get to shore first. Okay. And I think I can get to he here. And I am going to use Scorching Ray. I'm going to attempt to send one Scorching Ray at each of them. Okay. To the ones on the right? To, yeah, to the ones on the right. Okay, so straight roll for the top one and then disadvantage on the bottom two. Okay, for the top one, that's not going to hit, probably, in less than 11 hits. Misses. <laughs> Flies okay. over. A natural one for one of the others. And a 25 for, I, I think, the one I was going from the top to bottom, so... Uh, 25 for the one that's next to Ball. Yeah, go ahead and roll damage, and then give me a D100 as well. Okay. So that is 6 for the one next to Ball. And then the D100 is 92. It's been so long. I know. It's the first two firebolts. These spears of flames fly over, missing their mark. The first one flies over, hitting a tree in the distance. The second one slams into the grass, lighting it afire, but apparently not hitting any individual. The third one slams into something in front of Ball. Ball, at this point, you've cut down enough grass and enough is on fire. You can see this person at this point as they're trying to put out the flames. And you said 92? Mm hmm Okay. You feel a strange oneness with everything around you, as if you're connected to a great cycle that will begin again if it ever ended. So that's cool. Um, and that will bring okay. us up to Vesper. Okay. Uh, it was Purple that shot me? Yeah. And they're okay. currently paralyzed. Perfect. I don't think I have any choice but to draw the deck or draw the rapier and run at them, right? Yeah, so you pull it out as that bites into you. And I'm gonna, like, kinda, since they're already frozen, I'm gonna try and, like, go between the ribs and hit something that's really going to do damage. Sure. So add advantage as you're doing so, grabbing the back of their neck, drawing and driving the rapier, that's pressing it through. 19, uh, so, I mean, 26. Yeah, and that's a auto critical. So this is less of an attack and more of you position it and then you push. Uh, that is 17 piercing damage. And then roll another 3d6 for me. Oh, oh shit. Do I get a sneak attack, right? Also, because it's a. Uh, yeah, you would because of advantage. So roll okay, the sneak so that attack first. Uh, an extra two. Okay. And I roll 3d6 for me. Six. Uh, eight. Okay. So as you drive it in, this person unable to fight back or dodge or anything, you just drive it straight through the ribcage up into towards their vital organs. You withdraw it. And this blood sputters out, and you see some of the blood coagulating strangely and almost changing colors into dark greenish and then to black as it drips through. You can see the pain as their eyes water up, unable to move. And that will bring us up to this person, um, who's now no longer hidden from Ball um, and is going to do something real stupid. Dropping the bow, just letting it fall down, is going to reach down to their side towards a net and is going to... Launch it up towards you, ball. All right. Uh, that is a uh, 19. Uh, all nets are at disadvantage. I uh, remember from when Wink had it. It's either within melee oh, or it's outward it. long range. Okay, I see it. Uh, so it said that is a 17. No, uh, that will not hit. Okay, so they toss this net up. Um, good call, George. As you just kind of take your arm and slap most of it away, it wraps up briefly around your arm before they pull it away to no effect. After that, they're going to pull out in the other hand a weapon, but are unable to use it yet. And that'll bring us up to you, Ball. I am going to, uh, I guess, uh, take a swing here. So, Blooming Blade with my great sword, and now it's at not at straight advantage. Yeah, straight roll at this point. Uh, still, it's a 12. Comes down, and they're just able to turn to the side and dodge out the way as they pull the rope free of your arm, just enough to pull your strike to the side. 
I think um, having missed repeatedly, a uh, ball's going to kind of, you're going to see some frustration and ball kind of roars out. And as he does, um, I'm going to trigger Mantle of Flame. So I'll kind of, like, instead of just hearing the sound coming out of my voice, you also see at the same time, like, steam kind of come out of my eyes and they just, they turn red. And yeah, that'll be the end of my turn. Okay, so burning coals erupt out of your eyes as the flames begin to burn around you. This person's eyes are growing wider in fear. I'll bring us up to blue guy who just can't fucking get a break. Is going to um, actually, let's see. He's going to get right there. Is going to shift around, trying to watching the burning sphere out of their a corner of their eyes, they're turning, grabbing something, and throwing it towards Amson as a net comes towards you. That's an eight as the net flies over you, duck under it as it lands on the bridge behind you. They then uh, pull out a spear and are going to... Um, you see them grab it and then toss it up into the air, grab it over their shoulder, and prepare to throw it over, but they haven't quite got enough action to do so as you pull over to Purple Guy, currently frozen, tries to break free of Amson's magic. Um, that's a seven. Unable to do so. Still frozen. And then that will bring us up to Calvin in the water. Calvin will, assessing the situation, move towards the other side. Sorry, I guess that's as close as he can get. And will throw a javelin Okay. at this thing. So it'll be at disadvantage. You know where they are. But it's, oh. they're currently blocked by the tall grasses. Okay. Cool. At disadvantage. What do I want? Just fucking... That's good. That's better. So it's a 22. Yeah, that hits. Absolutely. You see the wavering glass and you just aim for center of mass. <laughs> Throwing this javelin level only has to trouble a few feet before you hear a surrounding impact of force. Uh, six piercing. Okay. As it drives in to this individual, you hear a resounding thud as it falls back. And is that it for you, Calvin? Yeah, that'll do it. Okay. So that brings us up to this person who's going to take a step up and is going to pull out their net and toss it towards you, Vesper. One of these nets is going to work, I swear it. So that is a 17 to hit you, Vesper. Yeah, that'll do it. Disadvantage. Does this brain. person have disadvantage? It's either long range or close range. It's always with a net because it's Jesus. Christ. Normal range is five feet, which is within five feet, and it's long range is fifteen. So it's always they're not so great. That's, that's a twelve. No, I'm not reworking okay. nets next time because this is dumb. <laughs> if they have sharpshooter or crossbow expert, are the only I, ways you can use a net with I'm, disadvantage. I made their nets bet better too. I was like, you know what, ten by twenty feet. Instead of whatever, but still is not Oh, helping. then if they were at 10 feet, you have a nice net. Exactly 10 feet, they're fine. No, it's still fine. Whatever, they drop the net. Nets are dumb. And then they're going to just <laughs> run up and stab you. That's all you oh. people respond to anyway. Uh, that oh. is a 22. That'll hit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that is six piercing damage, because they drive the spear into you, the short spear. And then make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, that's better. That's a 17. Okay, so you resist the urge to suddenly turn towards them instead. You're still locked on this first target. And that will bring us up to this guy underwater who's going to swim to the edge. And, uh, Calvin, you see as someone is coming up, parting the grass behind you, wading out into the marsh, moving towards you. is going to attack at disadvantage because they're in the high grass as well. Um, so that one is a 15 to hit you, Calvin. Sorry. Okay. So the first attack you knock away with a shield. The second one, still at disadvantage, is even lower, a 9. Um, they come around once again with a strange machete-piercing implement. Um, and this time you take your spear and kind of jut it, hit them into the stomach, knocking them back and off balance, able to dodge the attack. And that will bring us up to Amson. Okay, cool. So ignoring... The person that was at my left and now realizing he's behind me, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to cast Hideous Laughter at him. So that is a wisdom saving throw. Natural one. Yes. 
<laughs> so I'm going to chuckling. I'm going to say um I warned my tropical bird that he had it coming. I said two can play at this game. <laughs> Doubles over, grabs their stomach. And you see the eyes are still like worried, confused, and terrified about what's going on. But this person is doubled over laughing. Are both of those spells concentration? Yes, both of those are, so I will drop hold person. Okay, so the other one comes free. Anything else for your turn? Uh, I am going to... Move 30 feet towards Vesper, so that I am now on the bridge, and that is my turn. Okay, and so that will bring us up to Ezekiel. Yeah, so cool fish move. Did uh -huh. not so oh, work. I'll say you can attack within five feet out of the water, like if they're right up against, which would be this yellow one and then this uh, red one. They're close enough to the water, you can attack out of it. So... I can only get the, you said the red and the yellow one. I can't get to the big guy. He's too far off um, okay. of the shoreline. Well, I'm going to, at at 50 feet, so I can get to that guy, I'm actually going to dolphin swim and leap out of the water and try and slam him. Which is, oh, shit. Okay. Uh, I don't <sighs> have that character sheet. It's not a great attack bonus, but that is an 18. Yeah. The dolphin... <laughs> Swims through. Calvin, you see a fin as it launches out of the water, flying through the air, uh, slamming into the person right in front of you that you just hit with a javelin. So you had a little damage. Okay. Uh, you. So I get an extra D6 because I charged beforehand. So that is 2D6. A not bad. That's 9 bludgeoning okay. damage. And I will quick drop a second level smite into that as well. So that is love a dolphin smite. Gotta yep. love it. Just a leap out of the water and a flash of light. Ooh, this is he's not gonna like this. Uh twelve radiant damage. The shining radiant dolphin smashes into this individual, knocking them back as they s scramble to try to keep their footing. Um as the dolphin kind of lands halfway in the water, halfway in the muck in front of them. I wanna use a flaming sphere, but I am actually gonna use my bonus action to become a boy again over here. Okay. So taking human form once more, just one foot in the water, one on the marsh. And that will bring us up to actually him in front of you. Um, being suddenly smacked by a dolphin that's turned into a human is just going to flail wildly at you, Ezekiel. So that is a 14 to hit? Nope. And a 22 to hit. Uh, that will hit. Uh, 10 piercing damage as they strike out with this uh, short sphere. Ooh, and I lose my flaming sphere. Okay. The flaming sphere dissipates. That's going to be his thing. And he's actually going to... He's going to take a step back. So, Ezekiel, you'll have a tech of opportunity if you want to use your action to do it. No, I don't think I actually have my staff out, so I am... I'm kind of, I'm not going to punch him. Okay. So he gets back there, and that'll bring us up to this green one here, who's going to, seeing the harder targets in the grass, is going to turn towards Vesper. I'm going to use cutting words. Okay. Min 17 minus plus six. 6. Okay, so 17 against you, Vesper. Oh, God, yeah. Okay. Uh, six piercing damage. Okay. As the air hits into your side, make another wisdom saving throw. Awful. That's a 10. Okay. You feel another bite into your arm, and you turn to see this person, this green Verdana, standing there, and you're filled with rage, and you want to go towards them. Sure. That'll bring us up to Ellery. This person's actually going to take a step or two back. To Ellery, you just have climbed to the other edge of the shore. You see Ball standing, towering over this one, um, uncovered in the grass. It's now burning, and then this other one doubled over in front of the bridge. Um, I'm a little bit conflicted here, but I think I'm going to do, because some of them have grouped up a little bit, I am going to go ahead and send a little ember of flame over above the red one. And I think if I, if I do that right above him uh, and a little bit to the east then I can get three of them 
with a fireball. What's the radius on that? Is it 20? At 20 feet. Okay. And I think I can do that without hitting Calvin. If it's from um, from one square um, above and to the right. Okay. All right. So that's deck saves for all of them. Mm-hmm. All right. So the one that's closest to, that is a natural three. The bigger guy, that's a natural 20. And green is another natural three. Okay. So let's so roll see damage. what that's going to be. Ah. Two um, fail, one succeeds. As a cinder floats in the air, almost gently before landing, explodes flames, rocketing out, hitting the nearby tree um, as a shockwave of flames. A wall of this burning energy erupts out. So that's 22 for the two that failed the save, and 11 for the other. And this guy's actually somehow still standing. And this guy... Shoulders burning, and Calvin, Ezekiel, Vesper, you're not focused on this. Amson, Ellery, everyone besides Vesper, I think, noticed this. The one with the hole in his chest. Calvin, you see that glowing? There's actually a pulsing. As you see what looks like a heart cut open in his chest, beating this red, orangish, glowing light. You see, as the flames erupt just outside, as this wall comes right up to you, you feel the heat. You can see this person, their shoulders and headdress are on fire. Their eyes blackened, show no pain, no remorse, no emotions whatsoever. The others, one has been incinerated, falls to the ground, burning, uh, wrapping themselves uh, from the pain as best they can as the other one is. Skin is sloughing off from this extreme. And um, that is another wild magic surge. Okay, go ahead and roll a d100. 40. So you regain 2d10 hit points. Nice. Good job. Yeah. So you feel a sudden surge of life uh, continuing to flourish. Uh, Vesper, that brings us to you, and you have to go towards the green one. This still has flames kind of burning upon their arms and shoulders. Nasty. Well, all right. Just dash, I guess. There. Yeah. All right. Voice of a turn. So you're going to take three attacks of opportunity. Okay. Uh, the first one is a 17. Yes. Okay. Doing uh, six piercing damage. And I don't think this one has hit you. So make a con save as well. Okay. The con save is a uh, dirty 20. Okay. And then the first one is a 16. Okay. And a, a 20 to hit. Dirty 20. Yeah. Okay. Dealing... 11 piercing damage and make a con save. So purple was done. No, that's a six. Orange is done. So as the second one hits, you feel this burning sensation go into the wound and begin to travel throughout your system. You feel this strange internal burning. You're currently poisoned. Cool. That's a dirty 20 on the uh, wisdom check. There. Okay, so you continue to run past. Um, as you run past the the entity with no emotion, showing no pain, with a burning, rev- um, revealed heart from their chest, uh, beating, and is going to try. He's going to try to hit you as well. That is a sixteen to hit. Yeah. Okay. So they spin around as well. Um. Can I? Can I use bend luck on that? Um. Sure. What does that do? So I can give a. Uh, I believe it's a one d four penalty to that roll. Okay. So they rolled a 16, so you can roll your d4. Two. So a 14. Does a 14 hit you, Vesper? It does not. It just barely hits. Okay. So just barely, you see this person swing about to hit Vesper's side. You bend luck, and there's a sudden shift in wind as you see them trip, almost sinking into the mud that suddenly gives way under their weight as it goes too low as Vesper rushes past, dashing up to this person uh, with their bow out. Cool. Now I'm looking bad. Okay, and that will bring us up to this guy in front of Ball, um, who has dropped <laughs> the bow and is just going to try to stab you. That is a 16 ball. That won't hit. I'm going to try again. This time it's a 21. That will hit. Dealing 8 piercing damage, as they do quick, two quick strikes with these short spears. Um, the one that does hit, go ahead and make a con save. As you feel the... 
the wound hits you in this burning sensation of some sort of poisonous energy. Uh, it's a 10. Uh, so, Ball, you're currently poisoned as well. And you said it was 8 damage, sorry? Yeah, 8 damage. 8 piercing damage. Do they take damage from your mental flame as they, if they hit you? Or is it only if you touch them? Um, let me check. I think they do, actually. I think um, they do, too. Any creature takes fire damage equal to your modifier if it hits you with the melee attack. Yeah, so... Um, so that would be three fire damage. Yeah, so as it strikes into you, um, the flames are now beginning a full tornado inferno um, as it burns into his hand and wrist um, as it gets too close to you. Seeing that, he's going to back away and jump into the water. You uh, get an attack that... of opportunity if you want. Okay, and the poison effect, is that what exactly does that do to me? So you're currently poisoned, which means you have disadvantage on attacks and checks. Okay. Um, well, with disadvantage anyway, I'm going to use my Warcaster feet to cast Booming Blade as my, I guess, attack of opportunity. Um, okay. Disadvantage, eight. So nothing happens. This thundering is sweet. Um, too slow, though, as you feel yourself becoming woo woozy and dizzy, leaning from side to side from this uh, poison that's rushing through your veins now as they dive into the water. And begin to swim across, uh, swimming up to you, Ezekiel. And that will bring us up to Bull, actually. Okay. Um, I'm going to use my action to use five lay on hands points to cure myself of this poison. Yeah. So tap into yourself. The poison vanishes. The burning sensation dissipates. And I don't have jump on myself, but I'd like to try to jump across. Okay. Make an athletics check. Uh, 13. 13? Okay. Let's say you can get about there. So just flat-footed, no running start. You just leap and get about there. Sorry, just to clarify, like I, I want to jump across the water, so I wouldn't do a running jump. Okay. So you um, could use some of your movement to back up, and it'll get you a little further to then do a running start. So you'll get a little bit further if you do a running start. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I'll just be... Okay, so you splash into the water there. And, and then, then, yeah, I'll just be paddling, trying to get to the other end, and that'll be anyway. Right. Okay, and that will bring us up to this guy who's laughing on the ground. Do you see a save at the end of his turn? So that's a wisdom save, 13. So still continues to chuckle, laugh. And that'll bring us up to this guy that's pretty heavily wounded, looking around. He's going to run this way and is going to throw their short spear. That is a 12. Did you guys? No. Okay. The short spear flies by your back, landing at the ground um, a little past this other end of me here. That'll bring us up to Calvin. Uh, Calvin will grip his spear in his hand and thrust twice forward into Mr. Heartbeat Baby. Absolutely. And the flames from Ellery's fireball has burnt away most of the grass, so it's just a straight roll. Cool you can beans. see them easily now. Uh, the first is amazing. I rolled a natural 17. Yeah, you have. I add shit to that. Yeah, absolutely. You drive the spear straight into them. Okay, I'm going to dump a second level smite into this. Yeah, baby. Okay, so 3d8 plus my regular damage. I know how to play this game. It's been a while since we've had combat. Another d8. <laughs> As you get low, drive a perfect strike. Spartan 300 style. This goes right next to the heart. Flaring with radiant energy. Burning into the flesh. So that is shit. That's 14. 14, okay. 14 damage, and then I'm going to attack again. If I can find it. That's not as good. It's a 19 to hit total. Uh, that will hit as well. Hey, guess what? I'm going to dump another smite into that shit. Okay. And as you are striking into them, the blood that withdraws, as soon as the blood that you inflict these wounds upon, as soon as the blood is withdrawn into the air, it ignites into flames. Okay. These flames begin to burn you as well. This um, one's go just going to be a level one smite, for the record. I know how to math. 17 total damage. Okay. Um, and you take seven points of fire damage between the two strikes um, as their blood ignites in fire, kind of spraying around them as each time you wound them. This person has gone from looking pretty hardy to looking pretty 
wounded, but you can only tell from the body as their face is emotionless, shows no pain, no sign of backing down. Can you stay where you are? No, Calvin's going to shift five feet. You can't five foot shift. You could use your movement to move. Just because it's difficult terrain, so it technically calls 10 instead of five feet. Cool beans. I am going to run to Vesper is what I am going to do at this point, if I can figure out how far that is. Yeah, I know so the tan math. part is is double, uh, but other than that, five, ten. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I want to get to here if that's possible, which would be sure. yeah. Okay, you so next yeah, that. cool. And I'll take that attack of opportunity. I believe he actually uses reaction trying to hit Vesper. Oh well, then fuck that guy. So yeah, I just realized that. So yeah, you you run her away from me. He tries to hit you, um, but you're long trudging through out of the marsh and on. Up, uh, beside Vesper and this wounded Verdana in front of you. And then can I use my shield bash to on this guy to knock him prone? Sure, yeah. Cool. I rolled a 20, dirty 20. Yeah, you hit. And okay. you actually deal damage because of your yeah. fancy new shield. Yeah, uh, max damage for a total of 8 bludgeoning. All right, so you slam this not very pretty looking rough shield, but with these kind of serrated uh, implements onto it. You just slam into it, driving your shoulder. They're knocked off their feet as they fly back. You can see as they hit them in the skull, the blood begins to pour down the side of their temple as they fall back and onto the ground. A uh, bow still in hand kind of falls out uh, onto the ground as they're on their back. And I believe that's your turn. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a break from now. Okay. okay. I won't do it anymore. <laughs> oh, Calvin. This person is going to run up towards you. Amson is going to go ahead and try to strike you. Um, that is a 24 to hit. Uh, I'm going to use luck. So he has to re-roll. Reroll? Okay. Uh, so that's a dirty 20 instead. Uh, yeah, I guess that hits. So 8 piercing damage as they run up two hands and uh, drives the short spear into you. Um, they withdraw again and try to strike. Uh, this time, uh, that is a natural one, as you're easily able to duck under this as their foot slips on the slick and wet bridge. And that will bring us up to the big bad boy. He's looking pretty wounded at this point. 510. He's going to run up, not done with you, Calvin, and is going to try to hit you. That is a dirty 20 to hit. Yeah. And the second strike is a 13. Yeah, that so does not. I didn't think so. So the, the first one does hit, dealing six slashing damage and nine fire damage. As this uh, machete, now covered in its blood, is now on fire, as it's striking at you. And that will bring us up to Amson, who now has this um, Rodana in front of them, looking fairly untouched at this point. All right. So, seeing Vesper be a little bit ridiculous, I'm going to use a third level spell slot to cast Healing Word. That is 10 points of damage. Okay. As you're seeing a Healing Word, some of Vesper's wounds begin to heal over. I'm exactly bloodied. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. And then I am going to... Uh, yeah, I can't cast a spell, so I'm just going to attack him with my rapier. Okay, withdrawing the rapier, striking forth. Because it is sunny outside. That is not good. I don't hit, because that's a seven. (laughs) Okay, so you strike forth it, and they kind of withdraw the spear, and just quickly tap the top of the rapier and kind of bend it down as you just hit the bridge. Um, as they prepare to turn and strike once more. Ezekiel, that brings us to you. You're kind of on the edge of the marsh, barely standing up in a half a foot or so of water as another Verdana is swimming in the water towards you as both flames engulfing him, tornado of kind of this whitish light um, with these burning coals underneath it, a different sort of flames than you are used to. Dive into the water, steam rolling up from the flames. What do you do? Uh, Ezekiel is going to try not to be turned on by Flaming Ball right now and uh, run. I think even with the difficult terrain, I can get there um, with 30 feet of movement. 
Uh, and either way, I would like to turn into a yeah. brown bear this time and fill kind of that four spaces in between that guy and the big guy. Yeah, so you begin trampling forward through the marsh grass, turning into this massive brown bear. And am I currently flanking with Calvin? You are. I don't know how it works with a large... Okay, great. Then I am going to try and claw that fucker. Okay. Uh, so first claw... At advantage. Is what? 14? So just barely misses. As the claw comes over its head, it just sees you transform behind and ducks under. As the claw just barely comes in front of Calvin's uh, face, because your reaction time is quick enough to draw back. All right, then I'll try and bite. Worse. Okay. Okay. You try to bite down, and um, this person kind of turns their head and jams the antlers into your throat area, kind of keeping it, keeping you at bay, though you do break the antler headdress off. That's my turn. Okay. That will bring us up to old red. Red Red is dead. I love it when it rhymes. Red is dead. That'll bring us up to this guy who's on his back is going to stand up and strike towards Vesper uh, with their spear the first this one time. will have a disadvantage. Okay. Uh, well, that was a natural 18, and that is a 3. So that's a 9 as they strike towards you. Uh, Vesper, you see the short spear coming straight towards your chest, and suddenly there's you begin to wince and close your eyes. Before you do, you see metal imposed between you here, and you hear this sort of a snap um, as wood begins to crack. And that person is going to strike one more time. And actually, they're too long. They're going to just take the strike. That's a 12 against you, Vesper. Nope. Okay. Uh, this time you're ready as you dodge, um, as the spear goes between you and Calvin. And that will bring us up to Ellery. Okay, so first thing I'm going to m- do is move onto the grass a ways, so I can get a clear view of what's going on. Seeing so many targets, I'm going to go ahead and when I find this cast scorching ray again. One ray towards the one that just tried to hit Vesper, one towards the one on the bridge with Amson, and one towards the big one. Okay. So we'll go left to right in that order. Okay. So bridge first. Yeah. Dirty twenty. <sighs> Slamming into them. For seven points of fire damage. The fire begins to burn into them, into their side. Amson, you can see the pain as the left side of their face is being burnt. You turn, spin. The second one going towards the big guy in the center, heart beating, pulsing red. That is 19. That is as well. Slams in. For just three points. Okay, the flames roll over. And then the it's last individual. one is 22. That hits as well. Even with a little cover, you just angle it just over Calvin's shoulder, slamming. For 10 points. As that person goes flying, burnt and dead. And that is my turn. Okay. And you can all see as we move to Vesper. This guy's dead. The, the one is dead, flung to the ground, uh, burning in the grass. The one in the center with the broken headdress with a pulsing heart um, is currently on fire, their shoulders. They show no pain um, as they continue to fight. The rest of them are looking pretty wounded besides the one next to Amson and the one still laughing on the ground. That brings us up to you, Vesper. Okay. Green is dead? Green is dead, yeah. I'm trying to mark them oh, off the okay. map. Uh, am I still compelled to fight purple then? or? Um, no, the, your target is dead, so you're currently free. Great. Until uh, somebody gets you. I'm kind of going to reel back then, I think, coming back to myself, and I'm going to cast Lester Restoration on myself, so I'm no longer poisoned. Okay. The shadows form white light. The silver light as it burns away the poison within you, purifying you, redeeming your health. Then I will... No, can't do anything else. So that's my turn. I'll turn around to face uh, the one with the beating heart and just get ready. Okay. That will bring us up to... Old Yeller, who's going to continue to swim away from the giant. Well, you do get an attack of opportunity, though attacking with anything but a piercing weapon in the water is kind of difficult. You can certainly try. 
Okay, I'm gonna try anyway. Uh, is, now, in terms of difficulty, is that disadvantage or is that yeah just a penalty? Okay, um, so I'm going to do booming blade with disadvantage, uh, fifteen. Just barely hits. Uh, cool. So regular damage is uh, eight slashing, and then the booming part is one thunder. Okay. Um, and yeah, if he continues to move, it would trigger uh, booming blade. Yeah. Uh, he does continue to move. So he takes that one thunder, is that right? Yes. Or no, eight. He takes the one. He takes one thunder plus another eight. Okay. So he's swimming, gets to the shore. As soon as he stands up, there's a... <laughs> this loud thunderous cacophony that goes around him. And you see as if the left side and then the right, his ribs begin to like be bludgeoned in from just the sheer sound. Um, his ears begin to drain um, blood. As he is going to also stay clear of the goddamn bear and is going to come up to Calvin and is going to try to strike him. Natural 20. And the second strike is a 10. So the first one hits. No shit on that. Uh, so you take eight piercing damage, Calvin, as he drives up low as you're kind of distracted between the falling dead and the beating heart of the strange entity. And that will bring us up to Ball. The steam of this marsh water is kind of flowing up as you're surrounded by these flames. There's a mix, a strange mix of this white silver flames and this orange deep burning red and orange flames. The same color as the coals of your eyes that seem to manifest from the anger and frustration you felt. All right. And that anger and frustration is going to continue as I try to catch up to this um, yellow elf. Um, I think it's, is it half move in water? Yeah, it's half move actually in water because you're swimming and then half move in the yellow because the grassland is like this rough terrain marsh. Okay. So I have 25 move speed. I have no idea. Does that mean I even get out of the water? Um, so you can go, I'll say you can go up 15 because I think you did 10 last time. Okay. So maybe up to there. That's cool. Yeah, so you. you can swim towards, get to the shore. Step into the into the thick marsh. This area has been burnt entirely. You can see the flames starting to spread down the left and right sides. Okay, and then I'm going to angrily swing at this one. I'll use uh, the Phoenix Blade this time. So, uh, does a 19 hit? A 19 will definitely hit. So that'll be 14 slashing. Wow. That decimates them. All right, and then uh, it'll be 7 fire damage to um, the headdress guy. Okay. And And you can see the flames don't seem to affect him as much, though they still do burn him. And it might do extra. I'm not sure if when I roll fire damage on my turn, so it gets an extra three. So it'd be total of 10 fire damage to that guy. Okay. So your your flames burn through whatever resistance this person has anyway. As you see, though the face half burnt, though the arm is, the muscle is cut open, they still stand stoic, unmoving, though their body is falling apart. Um, as the first strike uh, with the Phoenix Blade just comes through, whoosh, a clean flaming cut. Decapitation as the head begins to roll as the flame continues on striking in at the back of this other entity. Is that your turn? Um, yeah, that's all. Uh, you know what? I'm going to do one more thing just because uh, with my bonus action, I'm going to cast um, Compelled Duel and just try to get that guy's attention. Okay. Um, is that a... Wisdom save? Or? It is a wisdom save. 14 DC. That's a 6. Yeah. So you, the flames hit them as you see the head slowly turn. Half of the face melted in flames at this point. Okay. Cool. So um, maybe I'll, I'll cast that, and as I cast that, I'll look to the headdress guy and say, How about you? Do you understand me? Okay. And that will bring us up to this guy. Guy still laughing on the ground. Makes another save. No, continues to laugh. You told a really hilarious joke. This guy, this purple guy, um, has no damn spear, has nothing. Does he have a knife or something? No, he has a short bow. That's not going to work. Uh, so this guy is actually going to... He's going to go get a spear. And get it right there. So Ezekiel, you would have an attack of opportunity against him. Okay, I will take that. Maybe I'll hit something. And actually... 24! Vesper would get it as well. Ezekiel, go ahead and roll damage. 12 slashing. 
Uh, Vesper, you don't need to roll. As you Good, begin to turn to strike towards um, the claws, the bear claws just rake against the back, lifting them up into the air. <laughs> as they falls and kind of rolls to a stop. Um, besides his dead Verdana comrade. And that will bring us up to Calvin again. Are we beyond the point of diplomacy? I'm just going to stab at him. I don't even fuck around. Okay. That's my bear noise. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's... I really wish I had some... In the 19s were... I rolled a natural 19. I really, I wish that was a uh, critical hits for me. It is not. It does hit though. Cool. And you can see, yeah, good roll damage. And you can see this person's body is falling apart. With flanking, do I get advantage? It would be an advantage. So go ahead and roll just in case it's a crit. No, it's not. Okay. So, roll. distracted by balls, compelled duel, and the bear as you strike to its side, dealing. Eleven piercing. That's enough. Oh, cool. Boom. And as you drive the spear into the side, you can see the flames beginning to build before erupting. Um, how do you want to do this? Uh, I want to uh, kind of take a like a step, like lean leaning forward with my shield, kind of taking a step back on my on my back foot, resting, pulling back my spear. And aiming the strike, going straight for his heart. Just a quick thrust, straight forward. Okay. As you do so, it... Through. There's a pulse. One more pulse of this beating, strange heart. Before... Flames erupt out from it, driving down your spear. Flinging towards the bear as well. As Ball, Calvin, Vesper, and Ezekiel and Bearforn need to make dexterity saving throws. As the flames erupt out. For Everybody has a plus three. Just throwing oh. that up. That aura, those paladins, inspired by Calvin's sudden strike to bring this creature down. I got a 23. I yeah. got a 20. Ball has 11. So uh, 17 for his kill. So, Ball, you take 15 points of fire damage, though I believe you reduce that because of resistance. Um, no, actually, I'm pretty sure I don't get resistance, um, but I will use my reaction to. Uh, Absorb elements. So, yeah, basically. Just, yes. Okay. So, you, so as the flames roll out, uh, Calvin, you can use your shield to block it best for true, and as he'll try to dodge it as best they can, taking seven fire damage instead. Um, and Ball, as and the and flames. I am resistant, so that's half. And your resistance half really. again. And as the flames roar towards you, Ball, um, how do you absorb the elements? Do you breathe it in, channeling your fire ancestry, or does it kind of just be pulled into your tornado of flames? Yeah, I think it's a it's a combination of both. I think it's kind of like uh, as it happens, I just kind of brace myself and breathe it in, and as I do, um, the flames around me kind of they they grow. Absorb elements does kind of allow me to kind of harness some of that energy. So while I I have it harnessed, it's kind of like the whole Zelda thing where you charge up your weapon and you have like a little glow to you. Yeah, absolutely. So the flames roar out. And some of it still burns upon you, but you breathe in a good bit of it as it joins in with your own flames. This sort of mixing, combating flames of the silver and the red. And so, Calvin, you killed him dead with your first strike. You still have your movement. There's one on the bridge with Amson, and then one other still laughing. Yeah, I'm going to book it for the bridge. So it'll be difficult to to move towards your own person, but 5, 10, 15, 10. Actually, you can get there. You're just moving around. Right there. Yeah. And let's see here. Try this again. Can I see Amson? Yeah. I would like to Seems cast so. Shield of Faith. All right. So what does that look like as you cast this? I don't think you've done it before. Uh, Probably not. I, with one my spear hand, I grab, like, I kind of, like, just kind of, like, loop my thumb under my necklace uh, with the holy symbol. And I kind of push it out, and then I kind of sh jut my shield forward, aiming it at Amson, and kind of let the light kind of glow off the metal from the shield onto Amson, and it kind of... Yeah, so like the light almost reflects off of that holy symbol and your own shield reflecting onto Amson, kind of covering in, covering him in this sunlight that now right. seems to shine brighter on his location as the clouds above kind of clear out if you cleared the way to give him protection from Valisol, the goddess of sun, or god of sun. 
And that will bring us up to Orange Guy. Uh, looking around, Orange Guy is going to say, fuck this, and is going to try to jump into the water. So, Amson, you can do an attack of opportunity. Wait. So, seeing their leader exploded and hey. perished. That's a 23. That is. That is an 8 piercing damage. Okay. Guy's not looking good as he push, splashes into the water, almost belly flops, ungracefully begins to try to spin away. And um, he gets about there. That will bring us up to dead and then to Amson. Okay. Can I see him? The guy in the water? Yeah. yeah, he's currently still on the surface. He hasn't gone underwater yet. Okay, I'm going to cast hold person on him. Uh, that is a 13 minus 1, a 12. Uh, so he is paralyzed in the water. And you see he begins to sink, unable to swim. Now, he's still on the surface currently, but in a few moments he will not be. All right, and I'm going to, uh, since this guy is no longer laughing his ass off and realizes that he's been doing that for the last 24 seconds, I'm going to, uh, actually, I'm going to go up to Ellery, closer to where Ellery is, since she's on the other side of the shore still, and closer to that guy that's still on the ground. Okay, and I believe with concentration he stops laughing? Yeah. And he's just kind of recovering himself, <laughs> looking around, just beginning to get a sense of what's been happening. Um, and as you move over, that'll bring us up to Ezekiel, bear for him. Okay. I have to run for him so I can get to there. I will, transforming all over the place, drop form, I think. Let me, 25, what is the range on this? 30 feet. Okay. So I will drop form back to regular Ezekiel, and then I will thorn whip the guy to try and pull him to shore. Sure. And he's currently paralyzed, so I believe you get advantage on that. No, that's just damage. I'm just... It's the same roll as this. We'll just take that. 22 to hit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy. Yeah, you hit him, and he's pulled 10 feet? Yes. Um, and weirdly enough, thorn whip counts as a melee spell attack. So I crit on the paralyzed, so he gets ten piercing damage. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> so you run forth and bear, doo -doo 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 -doo, and then mid step you kind of slide into ASMR form once again, whipping up <laughs> as the thorn wraps around his sinking form around the neck as you pull. And they kind of twist like a top, um, like a, you're pulling the lawnmowers. They kind of twist midair, <laughs> falling into the muck um, with some of the thorns still embedded in them. He's still frozen and bleeding. That's my turn. And that'll bring us up to green, which is dead, and then to Ellery. So two questions. First, uh, the one who was laughing is still on the ground currently? Yes, currently prone. No one we're laughing is beginning to look around, um, curious as to what the hell is happening. And the one that Ezekiel just thorn whipped, can I see that one under the you, bridge? You can't see that one because they're... Probably right at bridge level. Um, okay. You could hear, but you'd have to get lower or higher to be able to see them. So I'm going to see what happens if I go down towards water level. You'd be able to see them now. And it might be a hard shot for most, but for you, you can weave it between the water and the bridge. I'm going to go ahead and cast... Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cast a firebolt at that one. Okay. So that, I believe, is a straight roll, because he's currently prone, but he's also paralyzed, so he can't dodge either. Okay. It's just a straight roll. Uh, that's not... Normally we have cover, but you just weave it through, no problem. A 14? That would just barely miss. Okay. Then I will so glare and say fuck mark. and end my turn. As the flame uh, strikes through, you weave it. Under the bridge in between the water, but you hit the water before it actually hits them. <laughs> steaming up some of the water there. It'll bring us up to Vesper. Okay. I'm going to run forward up next to Calvin, a little bit behind Ezekiel. Can I see the brown one on the bank? He definitely has three quarters cover from that okay, area. that's fair. But as long as I can see him, I'm going to cast Toll the Dead. Okay. Is that a something save? That is a wisdom save. Uh, six. <laughs> it's not going to do it. So, 2d12. Uh, that is uh, 14 necrotic damage. So, Ezekiel, seeing the look in his eyes as he's just frozen in fear, you see the wound suddenly 
open it up, begin to fester. The blood seems to dry and be drawn out um, as this person tries to fight off. But eventually you can see the look in their eyes as they just give up on life as they perish. Um, the spell kind of drops as their limbs go from frozen to into the muck. And that will bring us up to dead person and then to ball. So ball still a weird, crazy tornado of flames has made it all the way to the other side of the pond. And now everyone's dead on fire on this side. <laughs> and the only one left is the one that's all the way on the other side. Of who's who's kind of like on his back. He's got <laughs> <sighs> like looking around, like hasn't even got a chance to look up, but is just seeing that entire North bank is just a light with flames, which is slowly burning along the marsh. So things quite aren't quite so funny anymore. All of a sudden things are not funny for him anymore. All right. Uh, I don't think I can get anywhere close to him within a turn. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, I guess I'll just kind of start walking towards him. Nothing else really for me to do. It's all. Is it still half movement here? Uh, half movement on everything but the green. The yellow is kind of high grasses and marsh, and it's kind of this thick muck that you have to trudge through, and then the water you have to swim. Okay, on everything but the green. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, I guess with my action to dash, I shouldn't be able to get onto the bridge. Um, no, not even. I'll get right beside the bridge. And I will end my turn there. Okay. So you're going to through the muck as fast as you can. That's going to bring it up to him. And he's going to say, fuck this. Uh, standing up with half his movement and then begin sprinting. He's going to dash. And he's going to be able to get there. He's just trudging through the muck, trying to get to the water. Calvin, y'all can all now see you're all going to get a turn before he gets the water. Calvin, you're going to have the first chance here if we're going to keep initiative. Um, you can see he's going to the water if anyone is able to get to him or stop him or attack him before he gets there. Uh, I will turn to Vesper and Calvin will and uh, examine her wounds and... If she is still pretty damaged, it did. I uh, I will dump some lay on hands. Okay. I believe she's still pretty bloodied. Um. Yeah, I'm bloodied. Fifteen. Does that help? Yeah, that does. Thank you. Warm sunlight falls upon your wounds, healing them. And Amson, you're actually the closest one to them. Sure. Why not? I will uh, use my action. To cast magic missile. Okay. Yeah. So you see him running as these these arcane missiles launch towards them, dealing three glowing darts of one. Okay. It's magic missile. It's the same in every edition. Twelve. Okay. As these do 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 do. And are these uh, kind of the arcane homing missing missiles from you? Do they look like stars or anything special about them as they slam into? This person's back, doo, 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 almost knocking them over. They keep, barely keep their feet, trying to keep them running. I'm going to say, not in particular, they are... I'm going to say that um, when Amson casts them, he's, like, juggling the three darts, and then he throws each one at them, and they're, like, purple balls of force light. Okay. So these uh, purple balls you throw into them, do, 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 rapidly back to back. And that brings up to Ezekiel. It's still up? Yeah, they're looking pretty heavily wounded. All right, I want to figure out what the hell is going on here. So I'll uh, just reach across, kind of like twist my hand, do one of those like upward grip things, and do one more entangle. Okay. Is that strength? Strength save. Um, so that is a minus one, a 11. Uh, that will not make it. Okay, He's restrained. The reeds and grasses wrap around. He's just <laughs> trying to pull up out of the muck because he's now stuck with these roots grappling him to the floor. Um, so at this point, every, you'll have a, a round or so to kind of get up to him at this point because he's still trug struggling to move. Just kind of pushing forward in the second and the sake of time. You all can kind of basically get up to him. Um, he failed his second roll as well. He's still trying to get free. But you're all, all able to get to them. Um, he's heavily wounded, and he's still trying to break free. I'll try. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, Calvin is going to be a lot more interested in letting him go. Not 
he won't encourage other people to to stand down, but he'll be trying to mend anybody's wounds. That's his concern. So Ezekiel will go up and try Sylvan again. Seriously, what? What the fuck, man? Don't get in the voice all wrong. What the fuck are you doing out here, and why? Ezekiel, make a intimidation check you as you walk up. Being nice to people with all of your people. It's it's more of everything's on one. fire. Oh shit! If everything's still on fire, Ezekiel won't be talking. I'll try and use shape water to at least get things wet enough where it won't spread quite okay. so much. So you kind of like see him and begin to move and like damn it. Turn to the side, begin warping the tide to kind of come up and put some of these grasses out. Um, um I'll use control flames to help contain okay. the fire. So Calvin's healing people, Ezekiel and Ellery are helping with the flames. Uh, between both of y'all you are able to um, do this pretty quickly. Um, this guy is trying to escape, so Amson um, does for a ball. I'm going to walk up to him. I'm kind of still in flames, and I'm going to say, uh, can you understand me? Are you trying to... No, I, I think... I'm just... He's just kind of saying it probably, like, I think, in common. Okay. Um, you can see he's he's freaking out. What the fuck? What the fuck? And he's just trying to get out. Like, as you, every step you take, he's just trying harder and harder as these flaming giants and all these massive people are heading towards him. The rapier, did the snakes bite and then recoil, or are they, like, still in my hand? They're still in your hand. Okay, I'm kind of just standing off in the back, I think, and just watching and just holding it okay. down to my side. A little bit um, in shock, I think. Sure. So, so Amson, um, that brings us to you. Everyone else is kind of distracted with trying to heal someone, not really concerned about this guy, or dealing with the flames are more important, or just in shock. Um, as you see Bull standing next to him, what do you do? You can see he's like pulling on a root. It kind of snaps as he's beginning to get loose. You have a feeling he's probably going to escape in not too long. I don't know. I guess so he's, he's heavily wounded and about to escape is what he's doing. You have a moment to decide. I don't know. I guess I'll just try hold person again. Why okay. not? Jesus so 10. So he suddenly freezes. At this point, the... Ezekiel, with the help of Eloi, are able to kind of die these flames down. Um, Ball, you notice some of the flames are dying down, but there's these orange and red flames that remain, contrasting against the white and silver flames as before. There's this deep burning coals in his eyes, and this kind of flames that are surrounded and intertwined with smoke now as the white kind of fades. As Calvin, you're able to heal as well. And you see this person's now frozen. At this point, you guys can basically do whatever you want with him. He's wounded enough. He's tang half tangled and and now paralyzed. So it's, it's y'all's choice what you want to do now. Um, I'm gonna say while everyone is kind of regrouping to get back here in that time frame where they're probably I assume making their way back. Um, mm -hmm. Paul's going to kind of like kind of grip him by the shoulder and say, uh, "Why can't you understand me?" I don't know if that's going to burn him at all. I'm not against that happening. Okay. As you do so, as you kind of grab him, kind of frustrated, trying to get through, trying to communicate to this person that you can understand them, but they can't understand you, as you grab and grip the shoulder and squeeze and kind of shake a bit, um, as you relief, you feel the burning. And as you pull your hand away, the flames kind of burn into their shoulder and up their face. You can see, though the body is, is frozen, you see the eyes kind of blinking, watering. Um, as you see the flames kind of revealing, burning away the skin, revealing flesh beneath even some bone, you see frozen in running stance and suddenly as it falls limp into the marsh. The flaming shoulder kind of into the moist ground. I think I'm going to kind of, of all kind of is, uh, is shocked. Like he, does, he didn't really intend for that to happen. And he's going to immediately uh, try to bring him back. And uh, put in point of lay on hands into him. Okay. So you, as you put your hands still flaming on there, the one point kind of dissipates at the same time as you put it in there. You're going to have to push more in as you just burn the chest further. If I see Paul doing this, am I close enough to run over and cast Spare the Dying? 
Also, yeah, you're you're at this point. It's been a little while. You're kind of making your way over there. You can sprint so over. Gently pull his hand away and then cast uh, spare the dying. So he's and least. and Bull's hands are still one. alight with yeah. flame. Uh, that's um, fine. I'm resistant. Okay. So you just kind of wince as you push it away as he begins to try to do it again as you touch the person um, and you see the chest heave again, living though heavily burned and scarred. That's right. I think Ball walks away, goes to the water. And it steams as you get inside. The flames don't fully dissipate, though they are quenched somewhat in the water. The rest of you are able to put the water down and kind of gather back up again. A few moments pass, um, with the flames dying down. The sounds of the waves return, uh, with no new arrows or bolts or uh, spears. The sun is now setting. Still acting like everything is fine. I'm going to walk back over across the bridge, I think, to the guy with the hole in his chest. And can I, like, look at that hole closer? Sure. And I just want to check since it's 1130. Do you guys want to pick up here next week? Okay. So we'll pick up there as y'all kind of cover putting out the flames, gathering up again, and begin to survey the scenario as the sun is setting and darkness is taking twilight. Thank you for listening to this episode of Back to the Story. For notifications when an episode goes live, you can find us on Stitcher, Google Play, Player FM, or TuneIn. Download the app and subscribe or favorite us there. If you'd like to contact us, you can tweet us at back to underscore the story. If you can't fit it into 280 characters, you can email us at thebonfirefables at gmail.com. And if you'd like further information about the campaign, the player characters, NPCs, or behind-the-scenes sneak peeks, follow us on either Twitter or on our Tumblr website. Lastly, if you'd like to support the show, feel free to buy us a coffee at ko-fi.com slash back to the story.